Are you ready for the next big thing from Quinn? Because the next big thing from Quinn is called Quinn 3 Next. And this is an ADB A3B. It comes in a thinking and an instruct. And I am having problems running this locally, but we're gonna talk about this also from a what this new feature release offers as I try to work through some of the problems that I've got locally. So if you are looking to run this locally, currently you're going to have VLLM as an option or SG Lane. And up front, let me tell you, I don't think your CPU offload is gonna be working in VLLM. Ran into problems with that, probably gonna have to go ahead and write up an issue is my guess because does not look like it is going to work until that is done. And the reason why is some of the innovative things that have happened inside here that Quinn has introduced that may be causing a little bit of problems. So let's real quick though, just go ahead and cover what this release is all about. Let me zoom in here so you can actually read this. Over the past few months, we have observed increasingly clear trends towards scaling both parameters and context links in the pursuit of more powerful and agentic AI systems. We are excited to share our latest advancement in addressing these demands centered on improving scaling efficiency through innovative model architecture. They call that the Quinn 3 Next lineup. And this might be just one of the first. So they've been hinting that there will be additional releases. So I actually think that we could get a exciting series. ADB also, let me just say, Quinn team nailed it. That size is generally going to be really good for people that are local, especially when they're looking at a Q4 or a Q8. Most people, Llama C++, an Unsloth Quant or Olama with one of theirs, they're gonna fit into this really good. And this is ultra sparse. So the A3B, that ratio of active to just kind of stored parameters is huge. That allows you to run really fast and We'll take a look at some of the numbers they're reporting. Definitely seeing that it looks like it will have a great amount of capabilities for people with lesser hardware. So hybrid attention is one thing they bring here and that is gated delta net and gated attention. Unfortunately, that is also most likely what's causing issues with me at the moment on VLLM when I'm enab enabling the CPU offload for a specific amount of gigabytes, uh, which unfortunately is not working which stinks. I did try it out with several other models also, and I tried pulling the latest and everything. It just straight up isn't working. I'll take, I'll take you through that here in a bit. So high sparsity mixture of experts. Yeah, so this right here is the real big innovation. That allows extreme low activation ratio in the MOE, and that drastically reduces the flops per token. So lesser hardware, go faster. That's exactly what that means while still preserving quality. A stability optimizations includes techniques, techniques such as zero-centered and weight decayed layer norm. So they've addressed and taken on context rot really heavily in this release. They have a 256K context window. Of course, the safe tensors are BF16 right now, which it's a lot. If you're gonna run that, it's not an 80. Essentially, you can usually double that and that's what it's gonna be. So that's more like a 160. So if you wanted to run it and you had 160 gigabytes plus of VRAM, well, then you're in luck. Uh, but definitely the, the stability optimizations allow for long co context windows that do not run into significant context rot in a mid-size model. Really cool. Multi-token prediction. Boost pertaining uh, model performance and accelerates inference. So that could also be one of the problems with why this isn't working in split kind of hybrid mode. Now, uh, keeping on reading here, you can see that it outperforms the Quinn 332 base on downstream tasks with 10% of the total training cost and 10 times the inference throughput for context over 32K tokens. That's huge. Having that big of a reduction, and I don't know if the base is out yet or when that base is going to be out. Right now, it looks like we've got the instruct and we've got the thinking mode. So you can download the instruct if you're looking for kind of a play with uh, without a lot of verbose thinking. Uh, lesser systems might wanna go with that if you don't have quite enough for a huge context window. If you're coding, you definitely probably wanna go with the thinking and utilize that context window if you're looking at local. This probably is gonna be the best local coding the experience that you can get out there. That's just my guess. That's pretty cool. I think that we, if these claims hold true, and of course, claims hold true is always hard. There is thinking tags, there is thinking support in the thinking version model. So you'll notice hyphen thinking, there's a hyphen instruct. Eventually there's probably a base that comes out also. 
So 15 trillion tokens of pre-train on it, and there was a lot of post-training that happened. Hopefully that post-training was focused on agentic and code-related tasks. ADB, 3B active, pretty awesome. 48 layers, so if you're looking at how you would split this with GPU layer offloads, paying attention to the number of layers is important if you're gonna manually specify that in Llama C++, so there's 48. And you can see that we have 16 attention heads for Q and two for KV. And also we've got 512 experts, 10 active experts at any given time, and one shared expert. So really, really cool. Like I mentioned a bit ago, context length 256 native, and you can scale that up to 1 million tokens. So this is a little bit different the way that they're processing things. Again, that's probably why certain people that are running this locally are gonna have a hard time. Unfortunately, if you're running VLLM and you're trying to use CPU offload, Looks like it's gonna take a little bit of extra time. Now, going through the numbers really quick, which I usually don't do, but since I can't actually run this, I figured I would go through that with you. We've got the Quinn 3 Next ADB A3B over here, Gemini, Flash, and I guess kind of their mid-range uh, monster, the 235B A22B over here. And it goes through the different test benchmarks that we've got, and you can see that the ADB retains very close to the same score. So really retains pretty good performance. And especially when you get down a little bit further here, you can see that it does really good against Gemini as well. So Gemini pretty much outclassed here according to these benchmarks. Could it be benchmaxing? You gotta always factor in that it could be benchmaxing. If you're looking at live code, you can see that some of the numbers that we're seeing here, 78 here and 76 here, that looks like it's pretty darn co pretty darn close. Now, if you go to the V6, you can see that that's actually a pretty big drop off. So I'm not sure how that's gonna shake out. Uh, that's not a big improvement, the 68.7 from the 66 that we see over on the 3B A3B. So that is interesting. Uh, I think really testing is the only thing that'll show us everything about that. Looks like it's actually a potentially great agentic agent here. Of course, I did install the updated transformers. Almost always you need to install the latest updated transformers or else you will get a message. That is the specific message. It is a big model from a standpoint of if you are running the full BF16, full precision, Q8 would be perfect in my opinion. I did try quite a bit to get this to run. Couldn't get it running. You also need to run the latest VLLM that you build. There's a lot of tweaky here if you're looking at running this in VLLM, which excites me if I can run it, which unfortunately I can't run it yet, but we're gonna get to the point where I can run it for sure. Some of the parameters that they're recommending, temp 0.6, top P 0.95, top K 20, and min P zero. You can set a presence penalty uh, between zero and two, maybe 0 0.001 or something like that might work out. If you are running this locally and you have significant GPU resources, or you just want to go a little slower and shard off to some RAM, on DDR5, it's not quite as bad as it is on DDR4, always keep that in mind, you would wanna go as big as you could. So they do suggest a max output length of 81920 tokens. I think you should pay attention to that. That seems very specific. It's exciting. This is exciting. I'm really, really upset I can't run it. <laughs> Uh, I'll show you the crashes that I'm running into. Maybe somebody in the audience has some ideas on that. Quinn 3 uh, is gonna be out on Onslaught. This, so this is probably the way most people are gonna run this when this comes out. So some of the problems I ran into. So I started out trying to get this to run with VLLM in CPU offload mode. Did not work. If you're looking at VLLM, I don't see any issues reported yet. Let me hit refresh on this specifically. So there could be a little bit of time for this to get fixed is kind of what I'm guessing. You can, we'll cover where you can run this, but you can run this a couple places in the cloud. I know Hyperbolic also has this available on an endpoint, and I think there was another person that I saw there. We'll, we'll take a look here. So uh, yeah, offloading the model weights to CPU. Uh, this this problem here, it's got, a, it's got a patch, and I really didn't wanna go through running that and then having it not work also, because that would have taken a lot of time and effort, and it, it wasn't gonna work, it's just not gonna work. So let's uh, check here on Llama C++. So the feature request is in for Quinn 3 Next support, and I think Theo77186 here mentioned something that you might wanna keep in mind. The main innovation and difficultly to implement in Llama C++, 
is the gated delta net linear attention. Otherwise, it looks rather standard. There's also provisions for hybrid models, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, VLLM had a pull request here, and if you go and check that out, it gives some details about it. So you might want to sign in to GitHub if you're interested in running this locally and follow along with edit one. This model is standard attention heads of 256 and only one quarter of that for rope uh, that already exists. So that shouldn't be that big of an issue. And the standard attention needs work too as the attention results must be multiplied by a gating mask. Uh, so that's gonna take some time probably for Llama C++ to have this ready. I did try Tensor Parallel 4 with a CPU offload GB set to 32, which should have fit it in theoretically in this machine. I also tried 64. None of the offloads worked. They always crashed out. So definitely hit some issues there. Now let's take a look at where you can run this right now if you're interested in running this. So of course you can run this. Let me go back up here to the top. We've put out a pretty long one here. On some inference providers, there's Hyperbolic listed here that has this as a endpoint. Novita also has this as an endpoint. And of course, if you wanted to, I'm sure the Quinn people would love it if you went to their website and patronized them through that with the Quinn 3 chat. And it does look like it is available up here, the Quinn 3 Next ADB A3B. So there you have it in a nutshell. This is probably gonna be what you're gonna to wanna to run. And I wanted to get this out there while I'm trying to work through some of these technical difficulties. And like I said, if you have any insight into these technical specific issues, let me know in the comments below. I look forward to reading what you guys think also. Are you excited about this model? I, 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 I hate that we're gonna to have to wait most likely a little bit, but also at the same time, I'm very excited. I think this is probably a great middle ground between the 30 and the 235. There was just this, pretty big gap that a lot of people's hardware was not going to be able to surmount. And this allows a lot of mid-range desktop kind of systems with maybe 64 gigabytes of RAM to 128 gigabytes of RAM to be utilized if they've got a fair amount of GPU resources. Does put everything into the realm of possibility for somebody with a desktop class system since desktop class systems now can go all the way up to 256 gigabytes. And if you're keeping an eye, you might be noticing that I've got DRAM exchange up here. I am shocked. Uh, DDR4 prices have skyrocketed. Congrats to you if you got your DDR4 uh, locked up if you are using DDR4 systems. Definitely something to think about as you're going forward. DDR5 is on the rise, and also we're seeing chip prices on the rise for, just really quick, I'll drop this nugget in here. We're seeing chip prices on the rise dramatically, actually, in Southeast Asia right now, which is gonna impact GDDR7, the 128 gigabyte, 5090 rumors, not true. Um, GDR7X does not exist, and that person was talking specifically about that. So we don't see that yet. There definitely is a 48 gigabyte kit that people can apply. There was a Russian person that had, I mean, let me say this, not insignificant skills to be able to reball uh, their CPU like that, but there are kits out there if you had those kind of capabilities if you trust yourself to be able to go ahead and apply those kits and upgrade a 4090 to 48 gigabytes yourself. That would lock you to a specific driver, if I'm not mistaken, which is unknown, but it is a possibility. 5090 modifications, we've not really seen anything out there yet that I'm aware of. The 128 is a rumor, doesn't look like that one's gonna pan out. The supers, uh, I know a lot of people have asked me about the supers. So the supers are gonna be released at CES. It, I am almost going to guarantee you they're going to be released at CES. I don't care what anybody else is saying. It's all a bunch of hype. There's no reason that they're going to release them before CES. And I've been pretty damn right on most of my predictions. Go through the channel history and check it out and call me out on any of my predictions that have been wildly off. None of them. But they're probably going to release that at CES. So if you're planning things out for 24 gigabyte GPUs, there's going to probably be two that it's rumored that came out from, I think it was Copetic on X, and there is a 5080 and a 5070 Ti that should come in the 24 gigabyte variant. What you want is the 5070 Ti because it'll be at a substantially lower price point. However, the 5080 Ti, or non-Ti, but super, is going to most likely be the one that would be available at a significantly higher price point. What is the impact of this on 24 gigabyte GPUs 
is a huge question. So I've recently been talking about specifically 3090s and how the impact on 3090s is something you wanna pay attention to because we should see the price come down on 3090s as the pressure on 4090s also comes down, I think 4090s will have a significant price impact in quarter four, let's say. And I think that we could see those very low, possibly as low as like maybe 1,000 to 1,200. Your 5090s, I think, are still gonna be in the 22 range, 21 range for most of the third party ones out there. We already see them in the 22 range, so. I think they're gonna hold there for the most part, but definitely when we see the entrance of potentially two new 24 gigabyte cards, that should offset things quite a bit. Now, the actual release date of those, I mean, CES announcement, usually it's like a month later before they start rolling out. So I would count on one of those, probably the 50, 80, 24 gigabyte, the somewhat less desirable for home inference rolling out then. And then probably in March, the 5070 Ti 24 gigabyte super would come out. So. There's some things to factor in for your considerations from my perspective. I can't say I'm correct on that, but you know, I give you guys a guesswork when I can give you guys a guesswork. But yeah, let me know down below what you guys think about this if you're excited about the Quinn 380B A3B. I think this is gonna be everybody's go-to model. This is definitely yet another crazy release from Quinn. They have released so much. They are on fire over there. They're on Capybara fire. So yeah, excited excited to be able to run that one. And I look forward to you guys' thoughts also. Drop your ideas on what you think about the GPUs. Big shout out and hats off to our channel members, everybody that buys me a GPU over on Buy Me A Coffee, which you can do, and also everybody that is a member on the YouTube channel. Big thank you. You guys actually have bought me GPUs and you are buying me another GPU here shortly. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Check you guys out next time.